we're very Minnesotan about our lakes, meaning that we want all lakes to be all things to all people. And they really don't work that way. I think in some lakes they're so shallow uh, that you can't support certain types of uses. And this is not a popular discussion in the state right now. A shallow lake is defined by the regulators as any lake that's less than 15 feet deep or more than 80% of the lake is less than 15 feet deep. And that's important because at 15 foot depth, light would penetrate down to the sediments. You would expect plant growth. Well, shallow lakes have a different uh, dynamic because they, uh, they don't what they call turn over because they aren't deep water lakes. Deep water lakes have a cold layer and a warm layer and in the fall when the seasons change, it tends to recycle. Deep lakes tend to be cleaner because they can kind of segregate that higher nutrient, colder water during the summer. And shallow lakes get warm throughout. They have a, a lot of lake turbulence because even wind can turn over the water and it's all those nutrients that are stuck in the lake sediments resuspend. So not only do you have phosphorus and sediment and all these nutrients washing into the lake, there's also all these lake sediments that recirculate and cause really high levels of phosphorus, particularly in our area, that causes algae blooms, feed the lake plants. We've lived in this area for about 15 years. I think that people don't know the classification of the lake that they live on. Understanding the ecology of a shallow lake I have understood it, but um, not necessarily my husband. So um, we've had some healthy conversation about what is a reasonable expectation of recreation on a shallow lake. He's purely interested in water skiing. So I think that overall as a community, we are all concerned about the health of our lakes. It's our property values, it's where kids swim. So we are very interested in being educated. Well, people go up to the North Shore or go up, up north and they see these beautiful clear lakes. They're big and they can swim on it. Um, they're sandy shorelines. So I've talked to a lot of people that have bought houses on shallow lakes with that expectation that it's going to be an up north lake and then come to realize it's, it's a very different characteristic than what they were expecting. Too much vegetation, I can't swim in it, I can't fish in it. I mean, that, that's what we hear a lot. So we're often asked to manage a shallow lake to a clear water state with a sandy bottom and no vegetation. When I tell people is you need a swimming pool, right? Because that's really not what shallow lakes support. We're charged as a watershed district and other local governments to meeting state water quality standards. We had to think about how, do we, how can we clarify these lakes, how can we get clearer so plants can survive and be more healthy habitat. Ramsey Washington Metro Watershed District is now very urban, but looking back to the 1940s, the district was primarily agriculture. There was a higher level of accumulation and more phosphorus was accumulating in those sediments during those ag periods. And all the sediments go into these shallow lakes and just kind of accumulate and they hold those sediments. We had to look at how can we sequester those nutrients in the sediment and not let them resuspend so easily. We also saw that there is a large population of carp in some of these lakes. Working with the university, we developed a way to try to identify how many carp are there, is the population too high that the system can't support it, then how can we remove them? Well, if you have too many carp, you know, Really what they do is they just root in the bottom or dig in the bottom looking for food. So it's a very simple process by which they disturb lakes. So they, they disturb the sediment and essentially they uproot aquatic vegetation. So there's no way vegetation can grow in those lakes. If you don't have any vegetation in the lake, then the water turns green because all of those nutrients are used by algae. If you net enough of them, then the lakes pretty much change immediately. The lake is clear and there's a lot of vegetation in the lake, so it doesn't take long for the lakes to, to come back. The reason the lake was free of, water, of plants previously was that the lake was so cloudy and so such poor water quality that the plants couldn't grow. But then you have um, an algae-dominated system where you have you know, dangerous and, and awful algae blooms throughout part of the year. The alternative is green lakes with a lot of algae. Shallow lakes exist in two states, and this is the, the difference between a deep lake. They either want to be in a turbid, algae-dominated lake, where the water is really green or brown, there's not a lot of vegetation, it's not good for wildlife, it's not good for fish, and that's what we call the turbid water state. Or they want to be in a clear water state that's dominated by plants. And so in that case, you have clear water, lots of aquatic vegetation, not much algae, but you can get vegetation that 
breaks to the surface, it's gonna be fairly thick that's in there. The lake doesn't want to exist in between those two states. It wants to be one and the other. What we have is a ball and cup diagram, and in a ball and cup diagram, what it's showing are the two different states that we have shallow lakes in. Now often what people want is they want us to manage the lake for a clear water state with no vegetation. But what you're asking us to do is to take the ball and balance it on the top. The ball wants to fall either into a turbid water state or a clear water state. It's very difficult to uh, maintain it there. So that, that's kind of the impossible task of a lake manager or shallow lake manager is to keep it in that condition. I think what people like is the clear water or clean water in the lake. But I think a lot of people are a bit surprised by the amount of aquatic vegetation that is growing in lakes once you remove the carp, right? And I think that that's a natural state. In shallow lakes, there normally should be a lot of aquatic vegetation, but because there's so many carp in lakes, people have gotten used to shallow lakes without vegetation, right? So this is sort of like the new norm. People look at shallow lakes and they normally see no veg. So that's, I think that's the way it's supposed to be, but it's actually not true. We see this over and over that, that whenever carp are removed from lakes, people are a little surprised that, wow, there is all of a sudden all this vegetation growing in the lake. They're more challenging to manage, absolutely, I think, but that's the fun part. And it's not just a matter of managing one component, say, total phosphorus, it's a matter of managing um, and balancing the fish and the plants with that, and then really bringing in the user. A lot of what happens in a lake system is mother nature, so to speak. Man has manipulated the system a lot in the past, but we're trying to get the system back to something that's more of a sustainable system that's good for the majority of the population, not just for lakeshore residents. You start with saying, what do you want out of your lake? You have to start there. Um, if you understand that, then you can say, okay, this is what the lake can support. Now, how do we try to find the crossover to the maximum extent we can and then work from there? Well, the district does look at both sides. We try to figure out what do the lake shore owners want and how can that fit in with the management programs that we have in place and how can we alter what we do to better accommodate their needs as well as maintain water quality and also look at the you know the taxpayers of the entire district everybody's paying for this stuff we've addressed what we feel is our primary job and that is improving water quality and we've done that we're trying to wrestle with how is water quality management connected with recreation and if there is a direct connection we've said okay we should be somewhat involved in managing that so we can balance some of those things. If the lake has some deep areas, you can use aquatic plant harvesting techniques, you can use herbicides, you can clear certain areas while you're trying to balance the necessary ecological benefits of the vegetation community while also supporting some of those uses. There are tools in the toolbox to do this. The, the challenge is they're expensive. Probably will get more involved in it, but at this point, the question is exactly what do we do? We obviously can't let the lake go back to what it was, and that would be decreasing water quality, and that's something that isn't acceptable. I think people should care about clean water in lakes, because we've really had a strong impact on lakes, especially in cities and in agricultural areas over the last few decades. I mean, really, really strong negative effect. So now we can do some things to restore those lakes. People really tend to focus on their direct use of that lake, and I understand that. We're Minnesotans, we love our lakes, we want to use them. And we tend to focus on, can I swim in it, can I fish in it, can I boat in it? But I think that that really overlooks some of the great benefits that other shallow lakes or shallow lakes that don't support those uses have in terms of wildlife habitat, flood control, water quality, and really aesthetics. It's not only about vegetation coming back to the lake, right, but that creates habitat for fish, and ducks and all kinds of other creatures. We know that native fish, for example, grow faster in lakes with more vegetation. So clear water is good and vegetation is good. I think it just takes a lot of education and I think it helped them understand what their lake can support. 